Howdy, my name is Pastor Josh, a captive of God. Our memory verse for today comes from the book of Psalm chapter 121, verse 1 and 2, and it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. Think about that. Before I begin today's teaching, I'd like to state two things. Number one, there's only one true God and his name is Jehovah God. Why am I saying this? This is because the world has decided that anyone who you worship is uh, the true God. But that's not the case. How do we know he's the true God? It's because he agrees with and endorses Jesus. Thus, we see that Jehovah God renders all the other gods useless. So I can categorically say that Allah is not Jehovah God. Buddha is not Jehovah God. The God of the Hindu is not Jehovah God. There's only one true God and his name is Jehovah God. Number two, just because you are raised up not to believe in the existence of the Almighty God, just because you do not experience God the way you expect him to uh, behave, does not make him suddenly disappear. So what I'm trying to say in short is that Jehovah God continues to exist regardless of what we believe to be true. I'll jump into today's uh, teaching and the scripture reading comes from the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14 to 17. And it says, For he himself is our peace, who has made the true groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the new law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. So this is Apostle Paul writing to the uh, church in Ephesus. Ephesus was predominantly in uh, the Roman Empire and uh, the people who lived there were Gentiles. Who are Gentiles? Gentiles are simply people who are not Jews. So I, I can uh, say that uh, most of the people in this world are Gentiles because the Jewish na nation is quite small. And uh, this is Paul encouraging the church in Ephesus not to feel uh, like they're not part of the kingdom of God. Uh, th there was this theology that Jesus the Messiah was just a king of the Jews. And it was the truth at the moment. But after he died uh, for all of us, he died and resurrected on the cross, he became the king of everyone. And that is one thing the rest of the world did not understand. So, in, in short, Jesus does not care if you're Jewish, whether you come from Africa or Europe or Australia or anywhere in the world, all he came to die for each and every one of us. And Paul was encouraging the Ephesians not to have doubts because there are vipers among them who are running around and telling them, oh, so someone came and preached to you that Jesus died for your sins and all these stories. But remember, he's the king of Jews. He was born in uh, Israel. And uh, the prophecies say that he will be born for uh, the Jews. He will come to rescue them. And that's rightfully so, but that's what the devil does. He doesn't give you the full details. He tells you part of the truth, just like he did uh, with Eve in the Garden of Eden. He told him, yes, he has told you not to eat that fruit, uh, but he, it's because he knows if you eat it, you'll become like him. But that was not there. So even the devil knows the word, but he doesn't give you the pleasure of knowing the rest of the details. So there are these preachers who are going to the church in Ephesus, uh, putting doubts in people's mind about salvation. And that is not true. And that's what he's telling him that. Who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. So Jesus broke the barrier between Jew and Gentile. And this was through the death on the cross. And, and we see the Old Testament sacrificial system uh, was a bloody affair. And, you know, God required uh, the priests to sacrifice bulls, rams, and uh, even doves as a sign of uh, sin offering and guilt offering so that they could be forgiven of their sins. And this went on for so long until Jesus the Messiah came, was born, and he died for our sins. He sacrificed, he spilled blood for you and me so that we can be reconciled to God once and for all. No more need for uh, the Mosaic law. No more need for all those regulations that are in the Old Testament. Or someone 
who hears this might disagree with me. But the fact is, the word says, by setting aside in his flesh the law and its commands and regulations, we cannot be able to fully fulfill the word of God and his regulations to the letter 100% of the time. And that is why we needed Jesus. You can never be perfect as long as you're on this earth. So if, if you think you're going to keep the Ten Commandments and that will take you to heaven, you're dead wrong. If you think you're going to put all the regulations that are in the Old Testament and New Testament and then you make it to heaven, you're very wrong. On the other hand, Jesus came and fulfilled that because he was perfect and that's why he was a perfect sacrifice and i'm not here to say that you should not obey uh, god's commands no what people need to understand is that under the new covenant the gospel of grace enables us to do what god wants you know so you will not be doing it to earn salvation you'll be doing it because you've already earned it the grace of god through the infilling of the holy spirit will enable you to do what is pleasing to god so i'll, I'll say it again if you didn't get it right you do not follow God's commands so that you earn salvation. But the grace of God enables you by the infilling of the Holy Spirit to want to fulfill the commands of God. He'll enable you to do that. It will be your delight. You won't be doing it to earn anything. And you see, uh, why the Jewish nation is special? It's not because they did anything better than you and I did. It's because God keeps his word. Why am I saying this? God promised Abraham that he will bless the rest of the world through his descendants, simple and clear, and his descendants are the Jewish nation. We see in the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 to 18, and it says, The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sun on the seashore your descendants will take possession of the cities of the enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me so the last bit is what i really want you to catch through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me so abraham obeyed jehovah god he was told to go sacrifice his son his only son the promised son who will be part of the covenant and he obeyed and you know God told him, I'll bless the whole world because of you, uh, because of your obedience and through your descendants. And we see, if you read Matthew 1, you'll see that Jesus is the descendant of Abraham. And you know, through Jesus, the whole world is blessed. How is that so? Because Jesus was sent to die for you and me, who are unregenerate. We do not know about Jesus. We are in darkness. We were meant to go and burn in hell forever. But through the promise of God, God blessed the Jewish nation. And through the Jewish na nation, the son of David, the son of God, Jesus was born and he died for you and me. And you know, his sacrifice was perfect and it was once and for all. So if you think there's something that you're doing that will convince God to save you from the evil one, you're wrong. Jesus already did it. Because you and I, nothing we can ever do will convince God of our uh, salvation will give us salvation all we need to do is just follow the procedure and you know that's detailed in the book of hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14 and it says for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy so are you one of those who are being made holy think about that if you are remember the sacrifice of jesus is enough that does not license you to go ahead and sin because if you've truly received the grace of god you'll hate sin simple as that the Holy Spirit cannot be inside you and allow you to live like the world does. So, if you find yourself telling, uh, uh, saying that you're saved and you're still falling for the same sin over and over again, or if you find yourself living like the world does, if you find the world accepting you, chances are you're not truly saved. You've not really received the grace of God. And you know, but how do you uh, receive the gift of Jesus that broke the barrier? The sacrifice of Jesus broke the barrier between Jew and Gentile. So how, how do you become part of this amazing grace from God? It's detailed in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, folks, what I'm saying is, now, the rest of the year, during the Christmas season, think about your relatives, think about everyone else, Put this in your to-do list as you do Christmas shopping, as you plan uh, to go for holidays, as you plan to travel uh, 
in the country to see your folks, as you plan to do party and eat all you can, put this on your to-do list for you and your family and your friends. According to Acts 2.38 on the to-do list, please listen very carefully. This is a matter of eternity. On your to-do list, number one should be to repent of your sins. What do you, how do you do that? You, you stand up and say, God, I've fallen short of your glory just like everybody else, and I repent of my sins. Number two on your to-do list, you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I know the modern church has shunned baptism. They just say it's just a sign for nothing. But, you know, the word says you have to be baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. So, number two, after you repent your sins, is go and be baptized by water, by full immersion, just like Jesus did. Jesus was baptized. Who are you to declare that you can't? Follow the rules and enter the gates of heaven. Number three in your to-do list, receive the Holy Ghost. That's a promise that's mentioned in Acts 2.38. It says, after you're baptized, you'll receive the Holy Ghost. You receive the Holy Spirit, which will guide you into all truth and teach you the ways of God. Number four on your to-do list, live holy for Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible to lead a holy life by your own power. Our flesh is fallen. We just want to sin. It's natural. You're born like that. See the little kids and you'll know what I'm talking about. And once you live a holy life, your destiny will be in God's hands and he'll lead you where he wants you to go. And eventually, when your brief life on this earth is done, you'll reign forever with him. So on your to-do list, I'll repeat one last time, repent your sins. Number two, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, receive the Holy Spirit. And number four, walk a holy life for Jesus. That way, you'll be part of the promise that God made to Abraham. I'll bless the whole world through your descendants. And this shows Jehovah God does not lie. He's not capable of that. It's not in his nature. If he says he'll bless uh, everyone because of that, then that's what will happen. He promises eternity for those who walk in his ways. Folks, consider about these things, especially during this uh, Christmas season. Don't forget that Jesus was born for you and me, Jew and Gentile, that we may be reconciled to God. If this message has touched you and you'd like to pray uh, or discuss something further, email us on uh, the, the email address on the screen. Visit our website and see how we can partner for the sake of the gospel. Folks, until next time, this is Pastor Josh signing off. Shalom.